In this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about the latest with Hendricks, LaPierre, Ivan Miroshnishenko, and how can this Capitals team win on a consistent basis? We'll talk about all of that and more next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. <laughs> Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. And when you're on YouTube, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And if you like the videos, give it a thumbs up. It really helps grow the channel. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. So in this episode of Locked On Capitals, we will talk about Hendrick Slopierre and how he didn't really feel like he lived up to potential in training camp, and how that put kind of a chip on his shoulder as he went down to the Hershey Bears, and I think hungry to prove to the Capitals and the Bears and everyone what kind of player he really is. Then later in the show, we will talk about Ivan Miroshnishenko in the breakout season he's having so far. And then to close it out, we will talk about how does it, does this Capitals team win on a consistent basis. Yes, winning more two games in a row is going to be needed if you're going to want to make a push for the playoffs. So just to get going here, Hendricks Lop here was one of those guys that, uh, you know, he went into camp, he bulked up, he put on some weight, and uh, he he did the right things, right? He, he uh, showed up with that lean muscle mass, he showed up hungry, and he wanted to prove to everyone that he belonged there. And, you know, for the most part, I would say, he put forth his best effort that he had possible, but at the end of the day, there was not a spot for him in this lineup. Now, I know Alexi Protus, uh, he would de- didn't necessarily have a spot in this lineup either, but he really showed up in training camp, and he proved to everyone why he belonged to be on the Caps roster. Is that true today? Is Alexi Protus, is he still the guy that the Capitals should keep on the big team on a night-in and night-out basis? Um, I will say that I think that we've seen a bit of a dip in Alexi Protus's production since the beginning of the season. I don't think he's necessarily lived up to potential. Um, so I think the Capitals are going to have some interesting uh, decisions to make going forward here. Who is going to stay on the big team? Are there any big players in Hershey that uh, could help the big team up in Washington uh, to help you know make a push forward? Because let's face it, this team is struggling. They they win a couple games. Uh, against some okay teams and then they'll play a formidable opponent like the Devils and they cannot pick up a win that is what they're going to have to do but just kind of looking at Hendrix LaPierre here Washington Capitals forward prospect Hendrix LaPierre has quickly settled in for his rookie season in the AHL Bears recording four goals and eight assists in his first 17 career AHL games while his start has been impressive LaPierre knows he needs to continue to work hard to get back to Washington, writes Nova Caps. I wasn't too happy with my camp with the Capitol, so I kind of came in with a knife between my teeth at Hershey. I try not to think too much about the possibility of an NHL recall. I don't want to burn any negative energy, uh, LaPierre recently told Landroit. For sure, I think about it on occasion, and every time I go into the arena, it motivates me to work hard to get a recall eventually. The goal of playing in the NHL, I have even bigger aspirations. But in the meantime, I am learning in the American Hockey League. And, you know, that's a good thing. That is a good thing for uh, Hendrick Slop here to have that attitude. Um, Same goes for Connor McMichael. Two guys that I think probably thought they were going to find a spot on this team. I think that in this case, you could probably even say Connor McMichael over Hendrick Slop here. But both of those guys are the crown jewels of the Washington Capitals organization as far as future is concerned. I do think that, you know, they do need a little bit more time in Hershey to develop. But with that being said, um, if we're starting to see a dip in production, you know, I mentioned Alexi Protus, um, but say for some reason, you know, just it seems like there's a better fit in Hershey than who's on the Capitals. And I think it would only make sense 
to give one of these guys a promotion because at the end of the day, the Capitals are in the winning games business. That's what they want to do. They they don't really want to care or they don't want to worry about who's on the team. What they want to be concerned about is who is going to get them their goal, and that is winning hockey games on a consistent basis. And I do think that Hendrix LaPierre is going to be a part of that. If he's going to be a part of that this year, I guess remains to be seen. I would project him more like, perhaps next year or the year after. And I know it can't kind of seems like it keeps getting pushed out further and further. Um, but I think a, a lot will be determined on what shakes out this season. Uh, you know, how does this Capitals team fare at the end of the year? Do they make the playoffs for one? I know, I think it seems like a foregone conclusion that the Capitals will make it to the playoffs every single year, but it is possible that they don't make it to the playoffs. And then I think that that will change uh, a lot of things as far as the Capitals are concerned, who is going to be playing out there, um, you know, in coming years. So I do think that Henrik Slop here, much like Connor McMichael, if they bide their time, um, I think that uh, they will have uh, their time is coming sooner. I know we know a rebuild is coming at some point here. I'm working on a mix of a lot of little things, whether it's my consistency, my physical level, winning more battles, more face offs, playing in a long in a full long season without having interruptions covid camp or whatever it would be fine it's about working on the little details especially defensively to be a player you can count on in nhl lapierre is lapierre is living truly on his own for the first time in his life in hershey lapierre shares a rental house with two other rookies vincent iario and hendrick rabinsky you know, Vincent is another guy that I think is going to be uh, a positive uh, uh, player on this team in years to come as well. He's a bit on the younger side. I know that doesn't really mean anything, but he's another guy that uh, another player that I think needs a little bit more development uh, down in Hershey. But I do think, you know, like I talked about, this team is coming up on a rebuild at some point, And I do think the future is bright with a lot of these big names, um, excuse me, down in Hershey. So I think they, like I say, you, you just have to develop and work on your game. Uh, we have a lot of fun together. I'm learning the pro-life at the same time as these guys. It makes you grow as a human being to make you food, to take care of your house. It's a completely different way of life. LaPierre has also taken under the wing of fellow Quebec native and Bears goaltender Zach Fucale. Fucale helps me a lot. He takes care of me. He's someone I respect. He's had a lot of success Everywhere he's gone, LaPierre said he is partners with Fukali for a team in franchise mode for the Xbox console. The two general managers are trying to win Stanley a, a Stanley Cup with a team they moved to Quebec. We have fun with it in our free time. And I think that's important, especially for these younger guys to have that free time to kind of bond. In this case, we're talking about uh, Hendrix LaPierre bonding with, you know, the, the veteran Zach Fukali. And, uh, you know, it's more about a bonding experience and a team working together. We talked about the Capitals and how much better they play when TJ Oshie is in the lineup. Same goes for that. Sometimes it's not about these players scoring goals. It's just about their presence and what they bring to the game, just their their energy and their positivity. Um, because, I mean, we're robots and the, the players out there are they're, they're, they're players. They're not robots at the end of the day. So they need that uh, contact with players on the team um, above and beyond hockey, just on a personal level. So I think it's great that Hendricks and Zach have that kind of relationship. Um, we went to, to the factory Hershey chocolates. It's pretty cool. You can choose your ingredients and they make your own chocolate in front of you. Sometimes at the beginning of the week when the factory is working at full capacity, it smells of chocolate in the city, but I don't abuse it too much. He laughed. So, I mean, that that's another one of the, the funny moments of, of Hershey in general. And I have visited and I watched a game in Hershey. And if you guys haven't had a chance to go to Hershey, it is a top-notch facility. Uh, I've, I've been to a handful of AHL games, and I will say that uh, in Hershey, uh, the arena in Hershey is almost, I would say, on the level of an NHL arena, and they bring it. And um, it's a really fun game to go and watch. So if you, if you can't make it to a Capitals game, if you can find some way to make it to Hershey and go to a game, I would highly recommend it. Um, me and my wife went there, or my wife and I rather went there on my 40th birthday. Had a great time. We did the whole sightseeing thing. We saw the chocolate factory. We saw um, the cab or the Hershey Bears play. Um, and then we, we also went up to Binghamton and uh, watched them play up there as well. 
definitely not as nice of a facility as the Bears have down there. But in any case, uh, if you get a chance to watch the Bears, those are your future players. Those are going to be some of the big names that are going to be on the Capitals someday. You think about John Carlson and Braden Holtby and just the long list of other players that have worked their way up through that fine organization. And, um, you know, I think that oftentimes people look at it somewhat disparagingly while well, you're getting sent down to Hershey. It is still professional hockey. It is one level down from the NHL level. And I'll never forget what Braden Holtby said. The, the level between the NHL and the AHL is razor fine. So that is a good place for those younger players that are on the cusp of making it to the NHL develop. And uh, I, we look, and I'll keep you updated on Hendrix LaPierre and Connor McMichael and Vincent Iorio and all those players as it's exciting for me to see the future Capitals and how they're developing. All right, so after the break here, we are going to talk about the breakout season of Ivan Miroshnishenko. I know that he has a, a, some time left on his contract in Russia, but he is going to be a future Capital as well. We'll talk about him next. Today's episode of Locked On Capitals is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source, source for sports, betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get all of the latest odds and trends from every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, we've got it at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. And guys, even if you don't like betting, if you could bet on a future Capitals game, say the Capitals taking on the Canucks or the Kraken, it makes watching the games that much more exciting. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. In this next segment, we are going to talk about Ivan Miroshnishenko and his breakout season so far. Um, and I know that when he was drafted, the, the rumor out there is he would have been a top five draft pick if it wasn't for his Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, but he is showing um, signs that he is ready and good to go. Ivan Miroshnishenko records eighth goal in first eight games. Talk about being ready for prime time. And, you know, he is just ramping up. And I think that by the time his contract is done in Russia, he will be poised and ready for a spot potentially on this Capitals team. But if not on the big team, perhaps in Hershey, I don't want to get ahead of myself too much. But I mean, I do think that the potential is there that if he continues on the, tra the trajectory that he's on, that he could be on this Capitals team in, in short order here, whenever the contract is up, I want to say he has one more year left over in Russia. But after that, I do think that he will be ready for the big team. Washington Capitals forward Ivan Miroshnishenko recorded his eighth goal in his first eight games, played for the Omsk Hawks of the MHL on Saturday. Miro also had two assists in one game played earlier this week for the Wings, giving him eight goals and five assists. In his first nine games played in his recovery from Hodgkin's lymphoma, Miro's, Miro's goal on Saturday game came against Sabrinsky at 3.38 of the second period. He would fire a one-timer from the right face-off circle for the tally, tying the game 2-2. Two two. He's now scored a goal in seven consecutive games, writes Nova Caps. So just a really a bright spot. And you want to know the thing of it is, is uh, when they drafted him, I mean, it was one of the things that I think the Capitals got lucky. Um, how did how did they get lucky, shall I say? I think that he would have got high, he would have been drafted on a higher level. Another team would have probably picked him and the Capitals would not have had the opportunity. So I'm glad that, you know, uh, through an unfortunate circumstance um, that the Capitals were able to draft him 
And I do think, you know, he is going to be that great player uh, for the Capitals in the future. And uh, we will keep you covered on his continued progress. But as of right now, he continues to light it up. And uh, we hope that, you know, he can stay healthy, uh, not just from the Hodgkins, but from anything else that happens in hockey, whether it's knee injuries or, you know, a myriad of other things that can happen. We hope his continued success. Miro completed treatment for Hodgkin's lymphoma in June and returned to workouts with the MHL club on October 21st. He was cleared to return to game action on November 8th. Miro, Miro began his return to the game of hockey playing in six games with the MHL team. In those six games, he tallied six goals and recorded two assists. That's in the Russian Junior League. Miro then made his first appearance in the VHL team of Monday in a game against, oh, this is going to be a tough one, Metallerberg. Uh, it was his first game with the VHL team since being diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma back in February. He recorded two primary assists in the game. Miro returned to the MHL squad on Thursday and recorded a goal and an assist, including his goal on Saturday. He has eight goals and five assists in his first nine games and played following his recovery from Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, as we remember, Miro was diagnosed with lymphoma back in February, but was cleared by doctors to return skating and workouts after successfully completing a course of treatment in Germany back in June. And uh, this was one of the things that came to mind uh, when they drafted him. And I know that a lot of other people uh, we're wondering about it as well is, you know, it was a risk. It was a gamble. You know, it's a very, you know, it's a fairly serious uh, a disease that he had. You know, is it possible, you know, that he, you know, would not ever be able to be up to NHL uh, levels? Would he ever play hockey again? Well, obviously he is making a return. So good on the caps, good on Ross Mahoney and the team doctors, trainers, et cetera, that, you know, were able to look at his medical record and sign off on him and say, we agree that he is going to to work out on this Capitals team going forward. And uh, we hope, again, like for his continued success, because all signs are pointing that he it's going in the right direction. Capitals assistant GM Ross Mahoney told the NHL.com that Washington's medical staff examined Miro's health records and that he felt good about the player's status following a video conference in May. So the Capitals ultimately selected Miro in the first round, number 20th overall of the 2022 NHL entry draft held on July 7th. So just taking a look at him. This is a Capitals off day. They're not playing today. So on these days, I want to take advantage of that by either having a guest on the show or getting you guys up to speed on prospects and guys that will be on this Capitals team. In this episode, I've spoke about Hendrix Lop here, Ivan Uh, I spoke briefly about Connor McMichael, but that is what's going on with the Capitals. So some really pro positive progress by Miro lighting it up over in Russia, proving that he is making, uh, you know, on his road to recovery. And uh, we look for bigger and better things from him going forward. I'm excited to see what he brings on the NHL stage when he is ready to finally come over and to prove to everyone what kind of player he is. And just a really great story in general that he was able to overcome pretty great odds to find a spot on this NHL Capitals team. Just a really special moment. And hats off to him for his tenacity and his fortitude to just not be deterred by the fact that he was facing, you know, a, a, a serious uh, illness and that he is able to uh, still end up playing hockey and play it on the highest level uh, juniors at this point in Russia. But he will be on the NHL Capitals team at some point. All right. So after the break here, we will talk about what do the Capitals have to do? to win on a consistent basis, night in and night out. It's not about this one-off. It's not about, you know, winning two games and thinking you're going to win the Stanley Cup. You've got to do more. What do they have to do? We'll talk about that next. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it is your team every day. In this episode, we are talking about your Washington Capitals. In this last segment, what do the Capitals have to do to win games on a consistent basis? 
It seems to be a bit uh, familiar to me. It reminds me a lot of last year. It reminds me a lot of the Capitals netminders last season where they would be able to pick up one big win, two big wins, and then they would fall flat on their face. And this Capitals team has struggled to win games on a consecutive basis consistently all season long. You know, they won two games in a row and that was a good thing, but that is ultimately not enough. They were able to pick up a win against the Flames, but then when they came up against a formidable opponent in the form of the New Jersey Devils, they fell short and they've got to find a way to close those games and win those big games. They had Charlie Lindgren and net, which I will say, you know, gave them just as good a chance to win as Darcy Kemper. I don't want to fault him on that one, but they've got to find a way to win these games against these big opponents. You know, everyone, they talk about it. They're like, well, we're taking a look at the schedule and we got these easy games against uh, the Coyotes or fill in the blank, poor team in the NHL. I don't want to win those games. I want to win those games as well. But the games that I really want the Capitals to win are the games against formidable opponents. I want them to beat the New Jersey Devils. I want them to find a way to beat the Boston Bruins. Those are the games. Those are the litmus test games that show you what this team has. If they cannot beat the likes of the Devils, if they cannot beat the likes of the Boston Bruins, then they have zero chance of making it into the playoffs. Or if they do make it into the playoffs, it's going to be, guess what? Another first round exit. If this team wants to make it to a Stanley Cup, and Lord knows that seems like a lofty goal at this point for this year, um, unless, you know, Brian McClellan goes out and does some kind of blockbuster trade. I mean, we're starting to get these players back. You know, we have TJ Oshie back. We have John Carlson back. The next guy to come back is Dmitry Orloff. At that point, the Capitals are going to assess, have to assess what do they have on this team? Is this team as is with those players back good enough to make a push for the playoffs? Are they good enough to make a push for the Stanley Cup? And if the answer is no, then changes need to be made or you're just going to nosedive into the concrete and they're going to either not make the playoffs for one or number two, they're going to make another first round exit. And as it stands right now, as I record this podcast, this team is not even poised to to even make it into the playoffs, period. I mean, take a look at where they're at in the standings right now. I know that there's a lot of hockey left to be played, but this Capitals team is going to have to do an about face if they want any chance of making a push for the playoffs. I know, you know, everyone was drinking the Kool-Aid off the two wins that they won. Let's widen the lens. Let's take the Vaseline off the lens and see things clearly. Let's take the face off the clock and look at the gears of this Capitals team. And you tell me if you think that they are ready right now to make a solid push into the playoffs. I know everyone will go back. Well, we have Ovechkin. Alex Ovechkin cannot win all the games for the Washington Capitals. We cheer heartily as he chips away at his goal total against Gordy Howe and, and Wayne Gretzky. And those are great things. But even Alex Ovechkin alone says it's more than just that. They've got to find a way. He, he would be more happy at this point right now to win another Stanley Cup. He has only had one cup under his belt. He wants more before he hangs up his skates, you know, ostensibly in four years uh, with the Washington Capitals. He chose to come back here at the end of the day. He could have gone to any team he wanted to in the NHL. There's not a t- uh, one other, the 32 teams in the league, uh, 31, I guess, if you subtract the Capitals, that would not love to have Alex Ovechkin on his roster. He chose to c- come back here. He could have chose the easy thing. He could have gone to one of the marquee names out there. He could have gone... Uh, to the Bruins or, you know, uh, the New Jersey Devils. What other teams are really big right now? That's what I'm trying to refer to. He chose to stay here because he had faith in this team. This is the team that he's played with since, since day one in the NHL. This is where he wants to be. So let's not squander these years by by just uh, failing. You know, Brian McClellan did the right things in the offseason, but sometimes you can't plan for the things that, you know, are impossible to plan for. Connor Brown was the guy that they, were, they signed to fill in for Tom Wilson, and guess what? Got injured. You know, things like that. Dylan Strom has played a big role. Uh, you take a look at Sonny Milano, played a big role. So he has made some sound moves, but they're going to make uh, need to make other big moves like that if they want any chance at making a push this postseason And we're already talking about postseason. You can't wait for Tom Wilson to come back. That's already around New Year's. If the Capitals continue to slide down the standings, 
it's going to be too late. It's going to be insurmountable for them to overcome that deficit. So what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to assess it once Dmitry Orlov comes back. What do they have? What do they have in the tank? Uh, and then they're going to have to make some big decisions going forward here uh, because otherwise things are going to fall out of control. And people are saying, Dan, what are you talking about? They won. They just lost a game. It's not just about this last game. It's about the problem you know, it's a systemic problem. It's it's a bigger problem than just this one game. It's it's how this team is going this year. And I don't want to put this all on uh, Peter Laviolette's shoulders. I know he's the head coach. And I do believe if they do not, you know, make it to the playoffs one or they don't make it past the first round, I do think it'll be the last year of Peter Laviolette in Washington. Um, but, you know, I don't want to get ahead of myself. What I'm talking about this year is I don't think it's too late. I do think if they make some prudent moves, I do think it, you know, it could put the Capitals in a position to make it to the playoffs and maybe a push. What those moves uh, need to be made, I guess I don't uh, know for sure. Lars Eller comes to mind. A lot of money there. Last year of his contract. I mean, there, you might have to trade some bigger players that you don't want to. Take a look at the Capitals blue line. John Carlson is the only player under contract after this year, save, you know, um, uh, Faravari, who's a restricted free agent. Same goes for Lexiev. But, I mean, are you going to give Dmitry Orloff another five-year deal if this team is facing a rebuild? Does that make sense to you? Um, so there are a lot of big decisions to make. Would you be? Would it be a wiser decision to trade someone like a Dmitry Orloff that they know that they're probably not going to be able to sign to a new deal? Um, you know, a tough decision. You know, people, are you getting rid of Dmitry Orloff? Are you nuts? Listen, it, it's, it's a, a lot of those things that go on all around sports. Either you're going to find a way to re-sign these guys or you'd be best to move on from them. You know, I'm going to kind of uh, turn this a little bit and onto baseball. If you're Nats fans out there, take a look at Max Scherzer. People were beside themselves when they moved on from Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. Remember that? Those were huge things. But the, what did the Nationals realize? They realized there's no way that they're going to be able to re-sign those players. Uh, um, you know, Juan Soto, same thing, you know, Scott Boris, you know, oh, go ahead, give me deals. It's not going to happen, but go ahead and give me deals if you want to. So the same thing goes for the Capitals. If they're not going to be able to find a way to sign Dmitry Orloff, if they're not going to be able to find a way to sign Jensen, he's another one that I hear rumored to be traded. Then let's get, the, let's trade those guys while they have their value intact, while the Capitals can seek a return for their services. Um, and that's what the Capitals have to do. I don't want to go, you know, and beat a dead horse here, but the Capitals have got to make changes if they want to find a way to make it to the playoffs. And that lofty goal, if this is what it's all about, winning a Stanley Cup, hoisting it above your head in June and going, we did it. They did it in 2018. I do believe this Capitals team can do it again, but they're going to have to make some changes uh, if they want to do that. Because as it stands right now, my assessment of this team is they are not built uh, for that level of play. They're just not. It's a hard thing to look at, but um, that's my assessment and what I see right now. Thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen for your next listen. Check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.